Uh, welcome everyone to this second part uh, on our, our tutorial with OpenFast. Last time uh, we saw an introduction to OpenFast where we um, we learned about the Elastodyne module and uh, how it was used for structural modelization. Uh, we explained the model shape prediction that is used in Elastodyne and we saw uh, our first example of uh, running um, OpenFast with a fixed non-rotating wind turbine, so the one that you can see on the screen. We saw how to tune the Elastodyne configuration file uh, and the main FSC file, and finally we launched a simulation. Today, we will learn a new module uh, with uh, this simulation, so we will simulate a fixed wind turbine in a steady wind with uh, a power low profile, so this is the, the profile of the wind that will be uh, coming to the turbine, and the turbine will, will be freely rotating, which means there is no generator for now, but it will just rotate in the wind. So um, for this example, we will need new modules. Last time we only used El the Elastodyne module, which modeled the platform, the tower, and the nacelle. Today, uh, we will need the Aerodyne modules because we want to apply aerodynamic forces to our turbine. So this is the module that we're going to use. And Aerodyne is not um, able to um, simulate the inflow, uh, the incoming wind. So we will also be using the inflow wind module uh, to simulate the, the wind. So before we go to the modelization part, I will explain a bit how Aerodyne works. So let's see it. So the way Aerodyne works is using the blade element momentum theory. This theory is a combination of two theory. Uh, the first one is the disk, act, disk actuator theory, and the second one is the blade element theory. Um, basically, so the blade element theory it says that you can split the blade into uh, each section and compute the aerodynamic loads on each section and then sum all of them. Um, it's quite easy to compute the aerodynamic loads on one uh, section if it's uh, composed of the same airfoil because you only have to look at the airfoil tables with the lift and drag coefficients and moment coefficient. So to do that, you only need the, to know the speed on the blade at this location. And to know the speed uh, on the blade, you only need to, you, to know the incoming uh, wind speed and the blade uh, speed. So you already know the blade speed because, of the, um, because you know the, um, thanks to Elastodyne, we know the rotor speed. So the last thing that we need um, is the incoming wind speed. And to get this speed, we use the um, actuator, actuator disk theory. So basically using Bernoulli uh, law, um, if you know the, um, the wind speed upwind from the turbine, uh, you can get the wind speed on the rotor disk. And you can do that for each um, annulus of uh, the rotor. So in the end, you can compute the, um, the loads on each section of the blade, and then you can sum all of them to get the aerodynamic loads on the wind turbine. So this is basically how, uh, how Aerodyne works in its simplest form. So let's have a look at um, Aerodyne configuration files. So here we are in uh, our uh, home folder for this simulation. And you can see that we still have the Elastodyne file uh, the FST file and the tower and the blade file that we need to that we need for uh, for Elastodyne to run, but we have uh, additional files. So the first one is the Aerodyne file. So let's open it and see what's uh, inside. So um, this is the parameters that you can set for the Aerodyne module. So first, you can specify some environmental conditions. Here, as you can see. Uh, when you set them to default, it will use the um, conditions that are already defined in the FST file. So we don't need to change that. Then we have, um, we can specify what we want to use for the blade element momentum theory, um, because the theory I explained just earlier is very simple. And then we have uh, additional par parameters that we can set to improve, um, to correct the, this theory. So here you can set uh, the one that you, you want to use the correction, par uh, correction factors that you want to use. Uh, then we can go to the airfoil section. And here you specify 
uh, how you will uh, provide Aerodyne with the um, airfoil parameters. Because as we said, we need the airfoil um, coefficient tables to um, compute the aerodynamic loads. So this is where they are specified. So here, you basically tell Aerodyne that you will use all of these airfoils in your simulation. We have the blade file, and this file will be the one that is important for specify for computing the aerodynamic loads. So let's see where this file is. Uh, it's this one. OK, and in this file, uh, you have the blade span. So here, my blade is um, 62 meters long. And along the blade span, I will uh, specify some information. So the curvature, the, um, the angle of the blade, um, the, the, its cord. And here, I will tell, you, tell Aerodyne which airfoil is being used on each section. So this is the important part. Back to the Aerodyne, Aerodyne file. We then uh, specify um, uh, aerodynamic properties of the tower. So here, the tower is symmetrical. So we don't have lift and moment coefficient. We only have drag coefficients. So here they are. And uh, we also specify the diameter of the tower. And then we already go to the output uh, section. And here, we specify which outputs we want. So you can find the names and the description of the outputs in the same uh, Excel file that we mentioned in the last video. So we are all set for Aerodyne. So now uh, let's see for the um, uh, incoming wind. So we need to provide uh, OpenFast with information about the incoming wind. Uh, so we use the inflow wind module. Here we can specify different type of wind. You can have a constant wind, uniform wind. So it can vary, but it's the same in all the simulation. You can have some turbulent wind. You can also use um, pre-computed time series. And finally, we can use a CFD precursor. But for now, we will just use a constant wind. Uh, the only uh, specification will be that the wind is, um, um, is undergoing the, um, the atmospheric boundary layer. So it's not the same at each altitude. Uh, here we can see uh, that closest to the surface, the, the wind is slower. and the higher we go, the faster the wind is. So we just need to specify this, and we do it using a power law. So let's uh, let's look at the um, uh, the inflow wind configuration file. So here it is. So in our um, elastic, uh, in, a, in our inflow wind configuration file. Uh, we will select this wind type, so the first one, which is the steady wind type. And we will specify the um, wind speed um, at a given height. And this height will be 90 meters here. Uh, so it means that the wind speed at 90 meters will be 8 meters per second. And the power law uh, exponent so will be 0 0.11. So it's a recommendation from um, IEC when we use this type of, uh, when we use wind on the sea. Then you have parameters, but these parameters depends on the wind type that we use. And for, for us, with wind type 1, we only need these parameters. And then we can go to, to the output list, where we, here we choose to specify the wind velocity at different heights to study uh, the wind profile. So we are all set with the inflow wind um, file. And now we just need to tune the FST file to accommodate for the new uh, modules that we are going, going to use. So if you rem remember in the first video, we only set the Elastodyne module to true. But today, we will add other modules. So here, we will tell uh, OpenFast to use the inflow wind uh, module. And uh, we, also, we will also tell it to use uh, Aerodyne. Uh, because we are using Aerodyne version 15, uh, we will use uh, we will set these parameters to two. And then we need to to tell um, uh, OpenFast where to look at the files for the the configuration files for each module. So here are their location. And then we are all good, so we can uh, start the simulation. So same as before, I have my um, I have my OpenFast executable here. 
So I will go to this folder. I will open a terminal window. So first I call for my OpenFast executable. And then I will uh, give it the FST file, so the main file for the simulation. And then we can start. So I have fast forwarded to the end of the simulation because uh, it can be a bit long with the uh, video recording on. Uh, but we just finished the simulation. So let's move on and um, have a look at uh, what's new. So last, like last time, we have uh, new files that have been, that have been created, um, the out and out B file. So you can have additional files that are being generated, but for now we just uh, need, we just want the, to look at the out file. So like last time, we have columns in this out file uh, where we can see the um, each uh, data that we wanted to output. But um, today we'll do a bit more. So we will uh, open the out file with Python and we will use Python to post-process the file. So here um, I'm using a VS code with uh, Python. Um, and I'm using uh, the OpenFast toolbox. So the OpenFast toolbox can be downloaded on uh, OpenFast GitHub, uh, like the OpenFast executables. And um, using this toolbox, I will um, use the function fast output file. And then I will uh, use the to data frame uh, method. So basically what it does, it, it will um, load the output file the, that we just saw on Notepad++ and it will um, load it to a data frame. So Let's see what it does. So I'm running it in interactive window because it's easier now. Okay, so it uh, printed uh, some figures, but for now I just want to have a look at the data frame. Uh, so we'll print it in the um, interactive view. And we can see there is 2000 rows. So our simulation ran for 200 seconds and we wanted the 0.1 second of time step. So that's good. And we have 43 columns. So each column corresponds to a particular um, time series. So first we have the wind velocity at uh, various heights. Uh, we can see, uh, yeah, we have wind velocity at 10 uh, different heights. And then we have other data. So we can have a look at everything that we can see. Uh, so we have the wind velocity, we have the azimuth of the rotor, the rotor speed, generator speed, and many more uh, data. So now we just, uh, we will have a look. Okay, so we'll have a look at the data that we simulated. So uh, first, we can look at the rotor speed. Uh, so we can see that it starts from zero. Um, during the simulation at the initialization phase, the rotor was not turning. And then it starts uh, increasing and it, re it, it re reaches 10 um, rotation per minute, which is kind of the optimal for this turbine. Uh, so when it's working um, well with the controller, it uh, runs at around 10 uh, RPM. But for now, because it's not um, slowed down by any generator, it uh, continued to accelerate um, to a much higher value until it was stopped uh, when the um, when the drag on the the air friction on the on the blades was enough to slow it down to equi equilibrate with the with the lift forces. Um, so then we can have a look at the um, the force on the rotor. Uh, so um, this is the force in the downwind direction. So we just we can just say that it will uh, maybe bend the turbine a little, but it's, it's not too high a uh, force. Then we can show uh, the rotor uh, aero power. So here, uh, you can see that this um, 
power uh, first increases as the rotor accelerates, but then it slow it slows down. Uh, it's because, as I said, the um, at the end of the um, at the end of the simulation, the rotor spins at a speed where the um, aerodynamic forces, uh, so the um, the lift and the drag on the blades, equ equilibrates. So the um, the air does not provide any more power to the blades. So that's why it's uh, it's slowing down. And then we cannot uh, see the generative generator power because in this simulation we have no generator. Because in OpenFast, if you want to, to model the generator, you need to use a servodyne, and we haven't used it here. But in the next video, we will use servodyne to model the generator and to have some uh, control to uh, our wind turbine to avoid it spins uh, too fast. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.